Off the Base is the title of my blog and weekly radio series on WUSF 89.7. The project focuses on military families, their stresses and successes due to multiple deployments. It grew out of my fellowship with the Rosalind Carter Center for Mental Health Journalism. Now here are a few of the selected voices from the Off the Base project. Former Army Captain Colleen Krebstecki supervised more than 100 soldiers and was responsible for the scheduling and safety of refueling convoys in Iraq. As soon as I got out, I ended up working as a manager for a medical device manufacturing company. And that's clearly very profit-oriented. And I definitely struggled with the differences in, in what was my mission. My mission, I'd just gotten back from Iraq, and there is keep my soldiers safe, have them come back alive. And now I was worrying about parts that might be coming in late into the warehouse. And that's just a, just a very difficult perspective to adapt to, especially when I didn't really give myself any transitionary time. April 15th, I got out, and two weeks later, I was working as a manager at a com- in a medical company. Army Specialist Christopher Kit Lowe was part of a Georgia National Guard unit in Afghanistan when he was shot trying to save a Marine captain and a medic pinned down by gunfire on the roof of a village hut. I have nightmares, and that's a given. I have anxiety. And um, I get panic attacks. I hallucinate sometimes. And those are the worst is the hallucinations because I live in a, a decent sized apartment by myself. And, and you know, I had to sleep with the lights on or sleep with um, something that I feel that would make me secure near me. Because there's just times that I would see, you know, teammates that I've lost. It's hard. But that that's something that I have seen my interaction and and talking with the kid is he he struggles a little bit with identity i think he struggles a little bit with guilt and until he gets past that he has some challenges that was air force senior master sergeant rex temple who served with kit in afghanistan befriended the young soldier and now mentors kit Cheyenne Forsythe is a former Army mental health specialist who served on a combat stress control team in Iraq. He helped soldiers on the front lines deal with post-traumatic stress, but he never expected to be living with it. Well, my lowest point during deployment was after the IED. I, I didn't sleep that night. I was actually in the, in the workout tent in blood, and I was yelling and screaming in the workout tent, and no one else was in there, and that that was rock bottom in the for my deployment. Afterwards, return my lowest point was actually when I was sitting in a cell in Killeen, Texas, after I'd been arrested for domestic violence, and that was actually my lowest point. And from there, I, I had to change. I had to do something. I had to address the issue. I I had lost control. I had lost complete contact with myself, and it was. It was like I was watching myself and I couldn't stop myself and I, it w- I, wasn't, I wasn't there. And it was, I was on autopilot and I was just assaulting someone and it was terrible. Cheyenne's fiancé, Joy Finley, understands PTSD. Her father is a Vietnam veteran with PTSD and bipolar disorder. To your credit, I think that you've come a long way in dealing with this and that it's a really a testament to the fact that PTSD can be healed. And to me, I think that's the most important message out of all of this is that it can be healed and that you are a living testimony to that. During times that, you know, the tensions might get a little high, you know, I might just say, come on, babe, let's calm down <laughs> and then take his hand. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's cool. I think that uh, you have to understand the triggers You have to know how to react to them. You have to educate yourself. You have to stay grounded and be the patient, positive person when necessary, because he's he's that person for me, too. This is Aniston. She's part of a military family. 
Her mom is Jackie Dorr. I first met Jackie when she was president of the Enlisted Spouses Club at MacDill Air Force Base. She was critical in helping make the Off the Base blog successful. She was my first spouse contributor. She responded within 24 hours of my request and is responsible for many of these beautiful photos, such as her daughter Paisley, seen here holding her and her sister's daddy dolls. Their daddy? Well, that's Brian. He's holding his youngest daughter after returning from his fourth deployment. It was Jackie's biggest fear that Aniston would not go to her father. That's what happened with Paisley after the third deployment, but not here. Aniston fell asleep in her daddy's arms. One of my unexpected joys of this project have been the military moms. Little did I know what an untapped resource they would be including those right here in our own WUSF family. This is Jared. He is the 17-year-old son of April Agle. Jared Agle decided he wanted to join the Marines while he was still in high school and went into a delayed enlisted program. He was 17 years old when they picked him up to take him to boot camp at Paris Island. Well, he survived Paris Island and infantry training, and he's currently serving in Afghanistan. April told me just recently how lucky she feels that she at least gets to hear from him maybe once a week, even if it's a five-minute phone call that gets interrupted or broken off at least twice. Another of the military moms who has been highly successful and contributed so much is Dory Griggs. Her son decided he wanted to go to the Citadel. It was an adjustment for Dory because she was trained in the ministry and had never been exposed to military life. Well, she certainly got herself up to speed and has blogged about it. Some of the highest rates of views have been her contributions. You don't see her face here, but this is Tracy Chiambati. This is her son. He's hugging her tight. This is the last time she hugged him. He's now on his third deployment. He's in the Army. He's over in Afghanistan. The military family is larger than just wives and moms. Here's a dad, Judge Greg Holder. His son is serving in Afghanistan. The judge is a veteran, and he tries to Skype with his son at least once a day. This is Kevin returning to Tampa from the VA in San Antonio, where he was being treated for burns and severe injuries after being hit by an IED. In the background is his aunt who helped arrange a homecoming at the airport for more than 200 veterans, family and friends, and other military members. Military families don't have to be related through blood, though. Staff Sergeant Juan Roldan, who lost both his legs to an IED explosion in Iraq, met Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Lurake, also an amputee, who was volunteering at the Walter Reed Hospital when Roldan arrived. They both now live in Florida. Sometimes the extra story, or the untold story, is the most interesting. This is Alex Cook. He spent five years in the Army, served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and was a sergeant by the time he got out. He now is an intern at WUSF Public Radio and has been essential in helping me not only form this CD project, but acting as sort of a semi-advisor when it comes to military issues, telling me the real ins and outs. And one thing I can trust Alex for, he will always tell me the truth. Mark Graff was in ROTC in college. His first assignment was MacDill Air Force Base as a public affairs officer for the 6th Air Mobility Wing. He's now serving in Afghanistan in the Farah province. This is the last photo taken of Marine Gunnery Sergeant Aaron Kenefick. He lost his life in a six-hour gun battle in Afghanistan. It's the same battle where Dakota Meyer was awarded the Medal of Honor for trying to save his friend Kenefick and four others. He did manage to save 36. I met Army Master Sergeant Milt Nation at the 9-11 ceremony held at CENTCOM for the 10th anniversary. He's holding a photograph of his daughter, 8-year-old Alexandria. Of her eight years, he's been deployed four of those years. This is Becky Hasey. She was a public affairs officer at MacDill Air Force Base and then went to Afghanistan to serve on a provincial reconstruction team as well. She's now stationed over in Hawaii. And this is Michelle Van Hus and her husband, yet another contributor to the Off the Base blog. That's the strength of the blog. 
There have been spouses, there have been moms, there have been veterans and others who have contributed their time, their writing, their photographs, and their stories. This is a summary of my year-long Rosalind Carter Fellowship. It was delivered to my fellowship class of 2010-2011 and to the 2011 meeting of the Carter Center Board of Counselors. President Jimmy Carter and former First Lady Rosalind Carter were there. My fellowship is over, but I'm told once a fellow, always a fellow. And the Off the Base blog and radio series will continue.